Hello, my name is Colleen and our project today is a poncho. And you can see that we have a finished adult sized poncho here on our mannequin. The poncho was very, very popular in the 60s and then somehow as fashion does, it faded out of fashion for a while. But I have noticed that the poncho is coming back. Now how do I know that? Well, I went looking for a pattern and I found a poncho pattern in every pattern book I looked at. So that tells me they're on the go again. And I really had fun working with this project. It's something that I enjoyed wearing because it keeps your hands free and it's something I enjoyed making. And I'll tell you a little bit later about something that really excited me, but no, I'll tell you now because I can't wait. It's exciting because there's so many different types of fabrics. And I was playing with the different fabrics because you know you need kind of a light weight, a flexible fabric for it to be comfortable for you to wear. and. What I found was this is a flannel. Now I like this flannel because it looks like a beautiful lightweight wool, but in fact, it is a flannel and it's very, very durable and very economical. So you can have one in the car and one in your tote bag. Once I started playing with this and wearing mine to see how I liked it, I found out a better secret. And that is those blankets that we see at the end of the fall season, right before Christmas when they're in the closeout bins, those blankets are wonderful. And I brought a baby blanket to show you today. It's the fleece fabric. It's already finished. So guess what? All I have to do is cut and hem the neck hole and I have a wonderful child's poncho ready to go. That was pretty exciting to me because I think I could do that in just a few minutes and have a nice gift. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take our flannel and we don't need a pattern. I talked about pattern books, but you don't need a pattern because all of the dimensions are written down for you and they are posted on the website. So you'll be able to go there for directions. But what we do is we're just going to buy a piece of fabric and then we're going to hem all four edges. And the way that I hemmed this was with a, a stitch that goes around um, and kind of flexes around. I, I call it the forgiving stitch. Its real name on the machine is the serpentine stitch on, on this particular machine. But the forgiving stitch means that it travels up and down and all around. And that makes even a beginning sewer look like a complete expert. So that's why I call it that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is you can see I've hemmed three sides of this. And I'm going to just roll under. I've pinned part of it. Let me just flip this out so it's flat for you to see. And I'm going to just roll the raw edge in and roll again and put a pin in it. I do like my pins because it keeps me from making mistakes. And then I'm going to roll it one more time. And you'll notice that right here on this corner, I had hemmed down to one side and then I just roll it up and hem over the other side. And it doesn't make any difference. The machine will be able to handle that. And it's a nice finish. So nothing fancy, but certainly something that is workable. And now I have my whole edge pinned. And so I'm going to walk over to the sewing machine and I'm going to select my forgiving stitch. Now on this machine, actually I've already selected it and the forgiving stitch comes under the quilting pattern, but you can see how it meanders along. And one of the things that we're gonna do is to create our own forgiving stitch. This particular machine has the ability to let me create my own stitches. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to my character and decorative stitches, and I'm going to choose the drawing pencil and the drawing pencil opens up a tablet that allows me to create any stitch of my own choosing. And this is really, really a fun way to get creative. Today, I'm not going to be real creative with it. I'm just going to touch the screen and set a point. Whoops, got to set it first, so let's go back. We'll go back here. There we go. We'll set a point. We'll come over, touch the screen, set a point. Touch the screen again and set a point. Come down and each time you'll notice we have to set the point because the machine doesn't know if you're going to edit that later. So you have to tell it that you really were going to touch it. So, come on. There we go, set that point. And then I need a connection. So I'm gonna go down about two stitches here and set another point. Now we have a test pattern that allows us to see what our forgiving stitch looks like. 
And we can put this into memory. We can do so many things with it. We can also change how wide or how far apart it is. So that's a real exciting stitch to be able to do. And we can put that into memory and we can use it uh, anytime that we want to by simply pulling it out of memory. And so here it is in the memory. And we could have just gone right to it if we had wanted to. So let's go ahead and I'll put this down and we'll do a forgiving stitch on our hemline. And I see that I didn't pin that very well, so let me repin that really quickly. Because pinning does make all the difference in the world. So here we go. We'll put this right under and tuck it in. And I've set this machine so that it will do a tie off when I start. And so we'll just let it go ahead and do its tie off. And now it's ready to start stitching. There we go. Okay, so as this stitches and my, it's doing my nice little rounded zigzag, let's talk about some of the other fun things of this. It's not only just for creating a forgiving stitch, but you can create all kinds of wonderful stitches for tacking down ribbon, for embellishment. I know I've done stars and wagons. I've seen people do thread spools and all kinds of exciting things. So it's a great tool. Kids really, really enjoy it because it allows them to do their own creativity. Okay, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to just go ahead and cut and we're going to step over here so I can show you how to cut the neck hole out of this poncho because it's very very easy. We're going to fold it so that the the short sides are together and then we're going to fold it again so we've actually folded it into quarters and then we're going to lay it down on the table and we're going to measure about a two and a half inch circle for a child. It would be a little bit larger if it were for an adult. And I know that you may be uncomfortable with cutting a hole out of something, and I am too, because if you cut too large of a hole, it's a problem. So keep that hole small, try it on, and then try it again. So I measured down about two and a half inches, and I put a pin in. Then because I can't count on myself to cut a perfect circle, I'm using um, the top of a CD stack. It's clear, so you may not be able to see it, but I'm going to lay it on here and it's going to be my guide. And I'm simply going to follow the curve with my chalk marker. And the chalk marker gives me a nice, nice clean line to cut. So that's all I have to do to get that perfect circle. And so I just come in and cut right along that curve. Now I already have one that I've pinned to make it a little bit easier so that we could go through this process. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the machine and we're going to remove the flat bed and so that we're just actually sewing on the circle itself. And to do that we just simply choose the free arm and we're going to slide this right underneath the free arm and we're going to put down our presser foot and we'll begin to stitch. And we don't have to be very precise because this is the forgiving or the serpentine stitch and we can just follow right around that curve. I did press this first because it makes things go a little more smoothly when you're working with all those biased edges. And you may want to do that too. It's a lot more comfortable to stitch this or to press this before you begin stitching. Okay. So we'll just do this real quickly around this edge. Notice how smoothly it is to turn when you have that free arm capability. It allows you to just go through this very, very quickly, very, very smoothly, and just flip that extra fabric around. So the next thing that I want to show you is a variation that you can use with this poncho. So I'm gonna let this one sit here for just a second and I'm gonna step back over to the table and show you another variation. 
and that is this and what we've done here is we've made a small poncho with a little outlet in it and that's for the person who doesn't like something coming over their head very smoothly or they don't like something coming over their head very tight I should say and that gives it a little bit more open look to it and then we can put on some ribbons some buttons any kind of embellishment um, I know that I'm an embroidery person and so my poncho is actually going to have embroidery all around the neckline and probably in a corner or two. And if you're not an embroidery person, it's certainly a good time to add buttons or ribbons or lace or any kind of additional embellishment that you would like to add. So add a little 60s fun to your wardrobe with ponchos.